My name is Rose O'Neill Greenow. I was born on a small farm in rural Montgomery County, Maryland. Instead of going by my birth name Maria Rosetta, I went by the name Rose. In my early teenage years, my mother suddenly died and my father was not able to take care of me and my sister. We were sent to live with relatives in Washington, D.C. Once in Washington, I became fascinated with the Washington socialite scene and even attempted to gain acceptance by the well-to-do Washingtonians. Even though I was mocked for my social status, I caught the eye of Dr. Robert Greenow, a federal librarian and translator with medical and law degrees. We got married on May 26, 1835, and will eventually go on to have eight kids together. With my husband Robert Greenow, I gained acceptance into high society. I socialized with many famous Washingtonians, like First Lady Dolly Madison and politicians like President James Buchanan and South Carolina Senator John C. Calhoun. In 1850, me and my husband left Washington and traveled west due to the promise of greater financial gains. However, after several years I returned to Washington, D.C. to give birth to my fourth child. Robert was supposed to follow within the year, but fell from an elevated sidewalk in California and died to internal injuries on March 27, 1854, now widowed and fueled with a pension from the federal government. I bought a house four blocks north of the White House and resumed my socialite occupation. I even maintained political alliances with Southern Democrats and Northern Republicans and my influence was used to help James Buchanan get elected president in 1856. When the Civil War broke out, I aligned myself with the Confederacy and in spring 1861, I became a Confederate spy. During the Battle of Bull Run, I obtained critical information about the Union Army's planned attack of Manassas, Virginia. I even sent 16-year-old Betty Duval through 20 miles of Union territory with a coded message for Beauregard which was tucked into her hair. After I began working for the South, I was given the nickname Wild Rose. I even caught the attention of the Secret Service and on August 22, 1861, Alan Pinkerton, head of the recently formed Union Intelligence Service, cased my house and noticed a young Union officer entering. Although Pinkerton was discovered and arrested, I became the next target. I was approached by Union soldiers the next day and was put under house arrest with my youngest daughter. Upset that I continued to pass information to the Confederacy even while being under house arrest, the War Department moved me to the old Capitol Prison with my daughter on January 18, 1862. I was released on May 31, 1862, and was told not to leave Confederate borders. I was hailed a hero in the South after being released. That summer, I went against federal orders and embarked on a diplomatic mission to France and Britain to garner support and funds. After being away for some time, I decided to come back to the Confederacy. Carrying $2,000 worth of gold for the Confederacy, I headed back to America on August 19, 1864, aboard the Condor, a British blockade runner. On October 1st, as the Condor reached the mouth of Cape Fear River near Wilmington, North Carolina, the captain thought he spotted Union ships. Attempting to escape the ships, the Condor became grounded. Me and two other Confederate agents, who were worried about being captured, requested a rowboat from the captain and started paddling toward the shore. The rowboat was soon overturned in the rough surf. Being weighed down by the gold, I ended up drowning. My body was found several days later and was buried with full military honors by the Confederacy. After my death, I became a revered symbol for the Confederate cause and left a legacy of Confederate espionage.